to start the uh, meeting off with the uh, approval of the minutes of the September 8, 2009 meeting. Does any member have uh, any comments regarding the minutes? Any changes? Can I get a motion for the approval of the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I believe the motion carries. Minutes are approved. Um, the first thing on the agenda is uh, the request of KMO 361 Real Estate Associates LLC, St. David Square, to remove a restriction regarding a prohib prohibition of restaurant use to that property. Is the applicant here? Yes. Nick? Okay. Evening. Uh, this is. I guess what we call St. David Square, which is Gennardi's property. I don't know if we're working here with cameras. There you go. Oh, do you have the dog if you, if you have it? Is that, yeah, okay. Thank And just so the board's aware, I'm sure they're familiar with the property. This is the Gennardi's building and, and TJ Maxx. Uh, back in 1991, uh, the applicant came to the township with a proposal to build what is now the Micro Center building located in this direction and also a 10,000 square foot retail office building uh, located in front of the TJ Maxx store. Uh, that was approved by the board and the, t and the applicant and the township entered into a uh, list of declarations on this property. One of the declarations was that there would be no restaurant use uh, permitted in these two buildings, meaning the new buildings. Uh, this was despite the fact that zoning at that time permitted restaurant use, um, as does the current zoning does permit restaurant use as well. And also right across the street, as we know, there are uh, two fairly substantial restaurants. What has occurred now that brings us before the board is that there is approximately three to 4,000 square feet vacant in this building here, the building in front of TJ Maxx. Uh, the applicant has been talking to various possible tenants, and the most logical choice is a restaurant-type use. Uh, and for that reason that we came before the Board of Commissioners, uh, and I believe you may have in front of you the restrictions from 1991 that stated, and in particular to what we're looking at here, is that no restaurant, supermarket, grocery store, or fast food store shall be operated or alcoholic beverages served in either new buildings. They were the two buildings that we're talking about. And then it also states that the ability to enforce that and can be modified solely by the Township of Radnor, that, it, that it's solely for the uh, Township of Radnor and it can be terminated by the Board of Commissioners um, uh, if they so desire. So what we're asking for here this evening is to permit to change that restriction um, to remove it. We're not intending to put a supermarket in there or a grocery store or a fast food store, uh, but we would like the ability to put a restaurant in. And that's why we're before the board tonight. As I said, we were referred to you by the Board of Commissioners. We initially went to the Board of Commissioners because the declaration itself states as to be enforced or modified by the Board of Commissioners. And for that reason, um, we're here uh, this evening. There is plenty of parking on the site, as you're well aware. It complies with all the township parking requirements. And even if a restaurant use uh, was permitted, we still would comply with all the township parking requirements. I believe what the Board of Commissioners would like is a recommendation one way or another from you. Okay. Nick, when you were saying they only want to use it for food, they would still restrict supermarket and fast food? Yeah, I don't think we have any problem with that, right? right. Will they also restrict alcohol or they want the option of alcohol? Yeah, we would also? like the option of alcohol. To be honest, the tenants we're talking to right now, it's not alcohol related but obviously it would restrict our ability if we still had that restriction on it. So we would like for that to be removed. And from a historical also. point of view, what was the theory? Why was this restriction put in back then? I think it was a negotiation that just went on. And um, 
you know, probably be speculation on my part as to why it occurred. Okay. Uh, I know there were some other restrictions talking about, I think, indoor loading and things of that nature, which we're not asking for any relief from. It's just this particular relief. And you may recall, too, and if you look at our zoning map, there's an R1 ring around this property and the property across the street. And I assume it has something to do with that. And also back in 1992, you know, things were different in 92 than they are in 2009, 2010. And I'm sure um, that was part of the consideration also. So the applicant's asking for the right to put food anywhere in that 10 or in the 10 and the 50? We're, we're, asking, we're asking for anywhere to put in either of these two, but in particular, we're looking for the 10,000 square foot building I mean, because um, Micro Center is in the other building. And, you know, I guess there's a possibility that they at some point would give back some of the space or something of that nature, but you know, um, I don't know if that would happen sometime in the future. These restrictions actually are for, I believe, 20 years, 25? 25. 25. Yeah, and they're due to expire, yeah, 2016. Is the owner um, proposing or considering um, expanding the building? No. At this nope. time or no. just going into what's there now? Going into what's there now. How many of the uh, units in the building are vacant? Currently one, but there's another one where I believe they're on a month-to-month -month lease. And how many units are there total? Four or five? Four units. Four. Four. Um, and are you thinking about a restaurant which would take up the entire space or just not the full 10,000 square feet, no. It would be approximately 30, we think 3,000 to 4,000 square feet. So I'm looking at Susan Bourbon. Three to, five. Three to five, okay. So the type of restaurant you're talking about is a carry-out or a pizza or? Um, no, I wouldn't call it pizza. I, I don't want to say you. I know you don't want yeah, to say. Yeah, but, but it's, and if I can, it, I think it's a, a very, very good use considering the location and the type of restaurant. It's well, not a fa what we're talking to right now are not fancy restaurants. Are it, not fancy. Are not fancy. We're well, talking well, about something that would be a lunch type place, which makes sense because of the office buildings right across the street. People could walk to it. You have the high school and you have Villanova. And so we're looking more of it probably would be um, a lunch type. Let, let's see, Nick. Yeah. If I understand. You want to put in, in some or all of that space something that will attract high school students, college students. John, I can't say, yeah, I, I can't say for certain, but as I said, the, it, it would attract more than just that. But knowing my children, they would be very, very happy if this use went in there, as would you and I. We would also frequent it. it it's just... All right. It's not, it's not a use that's limited to high school or college type kids. It's a use that everyone would use. There, there is not one of these, and I, I really can't go into much detail. There's not one of these, but we are in negotiation with a particular tenant. And there's not one of these in Wayne now? There's not one of these in Wayne now. Uh, now, shifting over to the micro center building, if, if this uh, change in the, in the agreement is made and Microsoft unexpectedly vacated that space, then does the change mean that you could put a large Super Flemings in there? Super no, uh, we're not looking for, remember, the supermarket restriction still stays. No, but I, I was thinking of a restaurant. You could. Oh, a Flemings like yeah. across. I was thinking yeah. Flemings grocery. Yeah. Right. You could put a large restaurant in there. If, right, if you were to permit, permit that. I, uh, <clears throat> You, you had asked about why this was put in the place in the first place, and so I called uh, Jim Higgins, who was commissioner at the time, and he referred me to Cheryl Tamola, and, and she made a comment that uh, they did this at the time because they didn't want, the, the Blue Route wasn't open yet, and if you've ever driven through the, in New Jersey, you know that you can get off and go to like little shopping centers for so forth, and they did not want that to happen. Um, they, they did not want, a particularly like a chain restaurant like I don't know, Chili's or TGI Friday or something like that. I don't know. That's what they said at the time, primarily because uh, it was a quiet neighborhood and they wanted to keep it I know, a nice, quiet community. Um, they also noted that, I, I, I don't know if there were any restaurants there at the time. There are three now, but there are the two across the street and then there's the Radnor Hotel. 
Um, that was the reason for that at that time. They, at least that's what she told me. And she, I think she was on the planning commission then or, or so. Um, that was supposedly the background of it. Let's see what else did she say. Um, Nick, just, can you tell us what, what MicroAge and uh, MicroCenter and Genardi's hours are now? They operate? Susan, do you know? I mean, I'm, someone in the audience may know what Genardi's or MicroCenter is. Genardi's 6 to 11. Mm -hmm. And MicroCenter's probably like 10, I would think. 10 to 9. Yeah. Thanks. This proposed restaurant, would that involve any kind of drive-through? No. Okay. What would you expect the hours would, I mean, is that like 10 to 11? I would assume it would be, I don't know if they would do, well, the one, again, the ones we're thinking about, I don't think does, well, does it do breakfast? They do, yeah, they do do breakfast. Um, till dinner, breakfast, including dinner. I, it wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be open later than 9, no, 10 o'clock. Yeah. No, nothing late. What, what's called fast casual in the business. So where you could get a breakfast, you could get a sandwich, you could go to dinner, but it wouldn't be a, a big uh, heavy duty sit down dinner or anything like that. Well, the thing, if you, re if you re lift the restriction now, you could put anything there, theoretically. You could put that in, and then two years out, you know, you put in, I don't know, <laughs> anything you wanted to. Well, again, it'd be a restaurant. We have rest, it, the restaurant use is permitted, and you have restaurants across the street too. But, right. And the reason for the request of being for the restaurant is otherwise we'd be tying our hands if, if we really put severe restrictions on it. And it seems as if the people interested are restaurant type users. But again, you know, we're only talking, at least in particular to this spot, we're talking about 3,000 to 5,000 square feet, so we're not talking about a large restaurant. Nick, could the township make a one-time, case-by-case, ad hoc um, waiver of this provision? Yeah, I think the township could do whatever they wanted. For another six years. Yeah, mm -hmm. for another six years. And I know where you're coming from because you're concerned because of the micro center and where it is at. Where does that lead you? I understand. Well, also, the, uh, the 10,000 square foot building has proximity to the condominiums right across the driveway. So you're going to have venting. There's going to be some odor. You know, ultimately, there will be alcohol if, if, if we were to approve it. So I think the question is apt. I mean, if we could look at it on a per-use basis, mm -hmm. and as it uh, kind of matures, I think the, the only concern I have is that relates to the location is that that light at uh, Route 30 and the Radnor Financial Center, it's, it's not very pedestrian friendly. Right. So to encourage people to come across the street from the office buildings, I don't know. Yeah, people walk across, the one up here, the one up top, I guess would be the westernmost one. I don't see many people walking, but the one that's more in the middle of the two sites, you see people crossing. Right. Because there's a bus stop there too. And but the one like at the top there. of the hill, I don't know. Yeah, I'd never see people crossing there anyway. And I don't think they would here. I think they would come down that one in the middle there. Yeah. And Is there a pedestrian light at that one? Pardon? Is there a pedestrian light at the one the, on the west end? I don't think there is. No. Is no. There? Yeah. There's no crosswalk there. Is there, Dan? No, there's no crosswalk, but there are pedestrian push buttons. There are. Oh, they're up top too? Yeah, on the both western intersections. Side. Nick, this is a, a 1991 agreement? Yes, correct. So it runs for 25 years, so that would be 2016? Correct. Do you know the, <clears throat> the dates of the, all, those, all that property is leased, right? There are no owners? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what are the, ex, do you know the expiration dates mm -hmm. of Susan. the leases for um, the other first ones. micro center? Mm -hmm. 2017. 2017. So, the, so when that expires, this agreement will have been expired. Right. Okay. What about TJ Maxx and the other place? TJ Maxx is 2018. 
what was the other one that was 2017 Bed Bath and Beer? Can you repeat them yeah, for the sure. people but in the audience? Susan, maybe you better come up and because people in, at home would not be able to hear that. Bed Bath & Beyond is 2013. I have another page I can look if there are options. Genardi's is 2012. Home Goods 2018. Micro Center 2017. And TJ Maxx 2018. How about the two? You're just looking for relief on the uh, two buildings, not the big TJ Maxx or Genardi's building, right? That's correct. Right. Okay. So Micro Center's lease um, expires after this covenant would be up anyway. Mm -hmm. So it really is just looking at, unless they were to breach their lease and walk away or something of that right. nature, it's really looking at the smaller building at this point in time. What about the other two tenants in the smaller building? GameStop is 2012 and Pet Value is 2010. And the, the cleaner is month the cleaner to month. Is month, to month. This used to be a um, pharmacy? No, it was the Right Start Toys. Right Toy Store. Right Start. It was high end toys. Nick, is there anything I didn't, I did read quickly your, uh, the restrictions and the covenants that were recorded. Is there anything about notice to the neighbors or anything in the restrictions? I mean, yeah, that's, that's obviously one of the concerns. Right. Um, these restrictions were obviously put in place in 1991 uh, for concerns as uh, I, I don't, you know, obviously Doug heard them through a hearsay, but um, is, you know, they were put into place for, for some reason and it is surrounded, there is residential um, areas right around the entire, both sides back in, you know, the Radnor Financial Center and everything which obviously will be affected somewhat. Um, and I guess that's one of the things that always concerns me is the proper notice to, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. I understand um, the agreement itself states that um, it says, unless terminated prior to two in the manner set forth below for the sole benefit of and enforceable solely by the township of Radnor and not for the benefit of or enforceable by any neighboring or other property owners which covenants may be terminated, modified, or amended thereto in writing by mutual agreement of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners and of the present or future owners of said track. That's the bottom of page two and the top of page three. And again, of what I recall on this, it really was a negotiation between planning, possibly one member of the Board of Commissioners at the time, and the applicant of what I recall. I know there was one member of the Board of Commissioners who was pushing the R1 circle because I was involved across the street. I was not involved in this project at that time. Nick, there was an earlier mention to uh, about an office building. Was that a four, four unit space originally intended as an office building? Not, not to my knowledge. It was always retail. Yeah. What restrictions are there, and maybe Dan needs to uh, jump in here. Um, what restrictions are there upon the owner's ability to terminate those leases and demolish that building and construct something in its place? Obviously, we'd have to come before you. Um, and it, as, a, as a plan. As a land development. Land development right. matter. But in terms of zoning, what are the requirements? Uh, it, the, it's PB and... Uh, I can look and see what our current requirements, what we have currently. This is from the front page of, of the plan, Dan, that I just put up there. You can't see it that well. It doesn't show up. It's from the front play, page of the recorded plan that was in your file. Um, it looks like impervious. Is currently 43%. There is a stormwater drainage control thing on there. Right. Well, I don't want, I, Nick, I don't want to belabor this long, but, but I'm just trying to think this through. Um, and I'm trying to ask myself, well, what is, what about if this building were demolished, that little building, the four mm -hmm. unit building, right. and were replaced by the largest permissive, permittable, permitted building, 
and then occupied by a single restaurant tenant. Is there any reason why that couldn't be done? The only thing would be possibly impervious coverage, because I think we're non-conforming as to impervious coverage. But the current code provides not less than 45% shall be devoted to landscaping. And I think right now it looks like 35%. Yeah, without asking you to do the calculations, it is conceivable that building could be demolished and replaced by a... You know, John, I, I don't know. All right. Okay. I, I, I really don't know. Well, that's without, a fair answer. Yeah. It's yeah. just... Okay. I'm just looking at the impervious coverage requirements, and I think we're non-conforming because the current code provides that it has to be 45 percent, and we're currently 35 percent. Now, but to be perfectly honest, if we were covering green, that would come into play. We would not be able to do that without getting some sort of zoning relief. But if we're just covering paving already, existing paving, although I think there is some green around there. Um, and it does say 20 percent for buildings. Right. So you are permitted up to 20 percent. So I'm sure that. Yeah, it looks like point. we're at 13 according to this plan here. Yep. The, the reality is, if we enter into a lease with a new tenant and we have existing, I'm sorry. Just identify yourself, Greg. My name is Greg Glass. I'm the chief operating officer at Mall Properties and uh, one of our subsidiary entities uh, owns and manages the property. And the reality is, is that if we can enter into a new lease here in the space that's currently occupied by uh, the dry cleaner and the vacant space next door, we will have foreclosed that opportunity. We're not going to make a significant investment in putting a new tenant in only to try and tear down the, the two uh, stores next door. Both of those stores have been there for a while. They have leases. Uh, the, the dates that Susan mentioned to you are the current terms and I believe all those tenants have renewal options, as do all the tenants in the, uh, the old B. Altman building. So the four main tenants have renewal options. Uh, Micro Center has renewal options. So it, it's, it's not that we're having, we have absolutely no expectations or uh, plans to change the character of the property. We're simply just trying to answer what the marketplace is telling us, and that is it's very difficult for these small independent users uh, to survive. And when we go out in the marketplace and look for a new tenant, by and large, they all come back as food, restaurant related. And actually, John, one other thing, too. I just looked in the restriction. And when the restriction is uh, no floor area will be constructed in excess. So we would have to go to the Board of Commissioners or, you know, to get approval to remove <coughs> that restriction, which we're not asking to do. It also says that, that if the, on top of page three, if the entire tract is subsequently fully redeveloped, then, the, then uh, wholly, you know, wholly exclusive use retail use, the covenants will terminate. But you'd have to do the entire property. Right, yeah, and there's, yeah. Then that's not happening. There. How's the current parking? It is currently, uh, currently is 966 spaces. We're required to have 855. Um, and I think if you've ever been in the site, there's plenty of parking there. I don't think that's an issue. It's functioning well, and there's never been a right, yeah. no shortages. Right. So the vacant space is 3,050 square feet. Help. I What's think it's 3,500. Of, of the cleaners. The vacant. Go ahead. Yeah. The vacant space is 3,050, and the cleaner is 1867. Thank you. Nick, would you be? willing to limit your request to that particular structure and exclude the micro center building? Yeah, we are. Right. Nick, one of the other, I guess, concerns that I have with that conversion of use is that um, currently that's a big site and it's, uh, it's at a high altitude relative to a lot of other areas of the township. And I just see, because I frequent Gennardi's once a week, there seems to be a lot of litter blowing across that site, not just Gennardi's, but um, back by the loading area, by home goods, and even in the front. And I'd, I'd like to see if the, if the owner might have some solution to um, have uh, maybe a, I don't know if it would be some type of, um, um, use uh, 
or, or some type of restriction within their leases. Yeah, that's that, what I was going to say. I, I was thinking they probably have something in their leases already on that, yeah. and you just have to I enforce it. it yeah. Well, it would be particularly for a, a food type use because that tends to generate more trash and more wind blown trash. And that's, I mean, something that if, if we were going to consider this, even if it was on a smaller scale, um, it would be nice to address that as we have that decision um, in front of us. Yeah, we would have probably no problem saying that the tenant would have to maintain, you know, the premises and, and that's part of the lease. Over the entire site. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming those restrictions apply to each of the tenant in the comp, each of those tenants in the complex. There's a couple of ways that I can address it. With a new tenant, I can put in even more strict language. With the existing tenants, the first thing I can do is talk to the property manager. We have somebody on site and say, right. you know, do me a favor, look around, tell me what's really going on, and maybe just by talking, the tenants will be able to address the problem without any. Yeah, and I'm not looking to point that out in terms of what that person's responsibilities are. I'm just saying I've noticed that because it's high altitude in the township, you get a lot of debris blowing around up on that upper parking lot. Yeah, okay. Well, I certainly appreciate the comments, and I'll look into it. Nick, can you tell me what is the, um, the document that's identified as volume 338? It was unreadable. That's just the deed, the deed for the property so that you know, when you do an agreement, you want to attach what it's in reference to. And so this is just the deed description of this property. And so from a legal standpoint, from a legal standpoint, it's being bound. This property is the property we're talking about, and that's the property that's being bound by this. Okay. Any other comments from commission members? I was going to ask a question. Um, um, Matt mentioned uh, um, odors and stuff like that. Are there ways that you can minimize or limit them? Uh, I mean, technical ways? Yay or nay? Okay. Greg? Sorry. When any tenant uh, brings forward their improvements, we have the, the ability to review and approve those. So, yes, you, you can control them now. You, you can't and you can't control every smell, but you know, uh, we, as an example, would not, you know, would would try and keep smells inside. We, you know, the refuse. Obviously, all of our leases require that tenants maintain their spaces, and uh, and that includes the exterior of the spaces, and you know, neat, orderly fashion. Uh, we do try and pick up. We sweep the property. We do things like that. You know, from time to time, does. You know, stuff happened. Do you know? Do some people come with a with a bag lunch, eat it in the parking lot, and throw the bag out in the parking lot and take off? That that stuff happens. But you know, we're as concerned about the overall look of the property as much as you people are, because it's what this is a a high quality shopping center in a high quality town, and in order to get the best rents, we want to make sure it maintain we maintain those high standards. I was thinking like. It, it's an extraneous type of thing. Like coal plants have scrubbers and stuff. I was wondering if there was something like that, but apparently the answer is no. Do you have plan on having any kind of benches or anything outside? That would depend on the individual tenant and what plans they bring forward. Uh, we certainly at this point don't plan on any uh, any large, you know, uh, seating area. The space itself really doesn't allow for that. There might be a, a bench, you know, a park bench or something that's put out out there, but not. Uh, not anything for other than incidental uh, purposes. And I think also that may require approval of the zoning officer. Remember what's happened in Wayne now as far as benches that we had to actually pass a new ordinance to permit outdoor dining. So I think that, I don't think that it extends up this far actually. So that could be something that they would need zoning approval for. Anyone else? Uh, anyone from the public wish to make a statement? Please come forward. Yeah, I'm Sarah Pilling, and I live in Garrett Hill, and I've heard rumors of the particular proposed tenant, and I just want you to know it's a highly desirable place to have lunch. It's a place that I would go to, and I think many of your, sh I don't think it's just Villanova and high school. I think it would be a very convenient place, sort of in the middle of the main line for a particular place to have lunch or to meet people. 
the one that I know of has a Wi-Fi set up, and so that I have gone and, and met with people who live sort of is in the middle meeting place. So I think it's very desirable. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yeah, and I didn't mean to make it sound like, I know Sarah picked up on it, that it's a high school or college type place. It's not. It's just from a marketing standpoint, I just think it's a desirable location, you know, because of where the high school is and where Villanova is located. But it is not that type of, yeah. Any further discussion from the Planning Commission? No. I, I just tell you my thoughts on it. Uh, one, I think it's a, a new chance to evaluate the logic of the restaurant there, so we can consider the, the logic of the 1991 agreement, but I think we start with a clean slate, in my opinion. We decide based upon current planning logic. Uh, to me, it seems like a reasonable use, and I'd have to hear why not. Like, I, haven't, I have to hear why that's a bad place for a restaurant. To me, it seems like a good place for a restaurant. Uh, I see some merit to John's argument that perhaps it would be better suited for a case-by-case exception uh, because we don't lose anything and maybe we get some control. So I, I see some value to that argument. Um, then I think the key is to let people vote with their feet. To me, it seems like a reasonable place for a restaurant. And then the one concern about proximity to neighbors, but we're going to have that with any restaurant anywhere. So I don't know that this is any more problematic than other locations for restaurants. Anyone else? I'll make one quick question. Dan? Um, you said there's a push button uh, down at that um, um, light down by uh, the west end of it? So yeah, people there, can walk there's across? There's a push button at both intersections. So you could easily make a crosswalk there if you wanted to? Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it could be painted. I would suggest that. Yeah, I guess the only, the only problem with that Doug, is we would need PennDOT approval, I think, this Lancaster Avenue. Would that be right, Dan? Well, I'm making a note to check the permit okay. to see what's shown on the permit. Right. It's kind of a detail for a land development for an application, correct? Or, or, or yeah. would it be? So not, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's in the, I don't think it's, yeah, yeah it's, not a, it's not in our purview under this yeah. request. Um, it could be something that Dan looks into in the, in the uh, um, obviously, the uh, owners of this uh, uh, retail uh, property obviously you want more foot traffic so that probably something they should look into because you'd be getting crossover from Radnor Financial Center and all that so that's something obviously we can make a suggestion but I don't think we could make it a condition of our approval here um, John? I, I tend to echo Don's comments I or feel the same way okay do we want to take this to a motion um, but do we want to give some thought to the, the case by case exception or the uh, I mean I, I see some merit to case by case, but I, I have to say I like the idea of, you know, part of the reason why we have codes is fairness, that we have a rule and it applies uniformly. So, um, is there, is there right, a but I don't, feeling? I don't, that yeah, I don't see any need to do more than the case by case. I mean, my thought would be if they want 5,000 square feet, I'm fine with that, but there had to be a reason why 20 some years ago they went through a very detailed document not to make these restaurants. So to protect those Residents, I guess, right to the west in the Radnor condominiums. I think, you know, 5,000 is all they need. 5,000 is all they, they should get tonight, and that's fine. If they want to build it bigger, let's talk about it. I'd be concerned about the hours. Again, concerned about alcohol. Same thing I said when we approved the Brandywine site across the street. I like to see no alcohol and the hours within the same as the shopping center. We, I don't think you'd want this open until 2 in the morning to really get to investigate how that would affect. You know, there's people right across that driveway. So that would be the concern. So that would be my move. I mean, let them come back ad hoc if they need more. Well, that the case by case approach, I think, um, begs the question of who makes the decision and what process is involved in the decision. Um, we could, at a first cut, uh, report to the commissioners that we um, think it probably ought to be done. The cautious way would be on a case by case basis. But that we had, if, if I can use the term, Don, a predisposition towards your thoughts that this, this looks like it could be a, a, a good use and we were predisposed to consider it uh, uh, and to permit it. Um, then the question is, well, how, how is that accomplished? Um, 
I suppose that could range from a delegation of authority to someone else, like the staff, to approve it, or trying to draw parameters around it, or having them having the applicant come back to us. Uh, but I think the commission, I sense that the commissioners want some word from us on the general proposition, and I think uh, Nick has has uh, narrowed the issue somewhat by agreeing to limit them uh, to eliminate the micro center building, right? And the the Altman. Um, Property was footprint was never included, right. so so we know pretty precisely what we're talking about, and and uh, I sort of echo Don's thinking that um, it may be time to take a fresh look at this, and I would go so far as to say that there 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 might be a predisposition to to grant it on a case by case basis. Um, what the, the only. But I, that, sure I think that I, th case I think by case that they mean we have to take the tenant to you for pre-approval. Well, we that's the that's yes, the issue. That's I'm thinking through what what I'm thinking is if this tenant falls through or doesn't work right. out, then the question is where are we? And I think from the township's point of view, as as seems to be recognized, um, we'd like to keep our keep our powder yes. dry, keep our cards mm -hmm. in the vest. So. Um, the, the question in my mind is, what's the process for approval? Do you come back to this board for approval? What's your thoughts on that, I, Nick? I think probably what we'd be looking for here and what the board of commissioners want, and I know you want to restrict it, is say you would recommend that the condition be modified so that a restaurant use not to exceed 5,000 square feet be permitted in whatever we want to call this proposed building, um, in the proposed building, not the, T, the, the site currently occupied by TJ Maxx. And well, that would basically... If, if you start, let me ask you a question. If you start with a proposition that we have by covenant and by agreement modified what was otherwise various rights and limitations existing in the, in the statutes in connection with the original building, does not the township have the right to approve the tenant? in effect, if it wants to? The township, as we talked about, could, we can modify this anyway, the, any way we want. You could say the township would approve the tenant. The problem with that is it's going to really restrict our ability to find a tenant because then we have to say, well, we got to go through a township approval process. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the reality is if, if you get in the position of becoming our leasing agent, you, you've got no, a gun to our head. Well. You, you, you approve tenant X and no one other than tenant X. We're stuck and tenant X comes uh, to I, us and says, ha, 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 you're the only one, we're the only one you can put in. And thanks. I, 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 I can't imagine that that's how you'll negotiate the matter. Well, no, but if, if, if you have the, the right of selection of the tenant, then that is what happens. Well, that doesn't. I mean, you don't. Have, it, 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 as an example, I, even though uh, the Gennardi building or the, or the B Altman building uh, has certain restrictions on it, if Gennardi's was to go uh, to leave tomorrow to come to us and say, "Look, we don't want this place anymore," we could go in and put any lawful use in there. I I, I don't want to get into an extensive debate no. about what chilling effect this may have on your negotiations, either before or after you sign a letter of intent or a lease, but. The fact of the matter is now that tenant can't go in there and you can't bring him in and you need to go back to the township. So the question is where on the spectrum of approvals um, do, we, do we stop here that's workable for both? I think in all due respect, I think you overstated just now perhaps um, the, the chilling effect it might have on your negotiations. On the other hand, we don't want to have a chilling effect and and bite ourselves in the foot, or shoot ourselves in the foot, or whatever. Uh, so I'm sort of asking out loud for the for the board as to what level of approval. I understand and, and expect, not surprised that Nick is asking for sort of a broader approval. I'm and not, I'm just I'm well, kind of limited, okay, yeah. that you suggested one. I mean, I would right. if I, I were you in your position as well. So I'm sort of asking the commission: Do we? Uh, indicate to the commissioners that we think an approval of a restaurant meeting certain criteria or do we do we 
keep our powder dry and, and essentially approve a particular use which might involve a particular tenant? I think, um, you know, when you, when you look at the, when the leases are expiring in that building and throughout, I think um, Nick's uh, uh, statement of a possible motion for us limited into the 5,000 square feet of that building is actually pretty um, agreeable, and I think that's something that we should really look at. I think going one step further and, and trying to um, do it on a case-by-case, i.e. tenant-by-tenant basis, is uh, overly restrictive, and I don't think that, that, that we should subject the, uh, the property owner to that. I th and I think there would probably be other legal ramifications that might come along with giving us that much authority. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to open up that box. But I do think that um, the $5,000 or the 5,000 square foot um, uh, offer, I think, is, is reasonable. And, and in my mind, I think is reasonable. And it, I think it takes care of Don's concerns. I think it takes care of most of your concerns, John. And um, you know, it gets the, the property owner an ability that they can possibly lease up that space to a restaurant that it looks like we're going to be really happy with, <laughs> whatever that restaurant might be. It, it, it appears that the only thing that needs to change is uh, covenant B on page three, where it says no restaurant. I mean, we've already told you that we have some concerns about ventilation and you know, uh, public address systems. And all, all of this stuff was kind of carefully thought through initially. You're just looking for an exception. Right. So yes, I, yes. I, I think we just amend paragraph B, and we just say that you know whatever the size is, 3,500 or 5,000 square feet, is a permittable um, restaurant use. You know, alcohol. I you know I guess I guess we'd have to we'd have to think that that would be a reasonable. Uh, concession, given the fact that a lot of these um, restaurants are now serving alcohol, um, but and if I'm not just uh, on that subject, um, and I'm not well versed in this area of the law. I believe Mr. Keneally is. With regard to moving a liquor license into that facility, you'd have to come before our commissioners right. anyway. So I mean, that would be a uh, something that you know. Again, we're not granting a carte blanche to go open a bar up in that restaurant at this point in time. Well, they, they only have to come to the commissioners if the license is coming outside of Radnor. Outside of Radnor, right. not an internal transfer. Right. If it's yeah. in Radnor. internal, you have to go to LCB and get their approval and everything, and it gets publicized. Commissioners are notified of it, but it's not, you're right, it's an outside, if it came from outside Radnor Township, that's when the commissioners would have approval. Okay. Um, um, would there be I agree with Mark. I, I, I'm troubled by making something that's too so specific that we're selecting clients or in the position to select a client and I'm inclined to gravitate more toward the broader as you described it and then uh, I would say striking out alcoholic beverage and let that follow the normal process of restaurants in our township also so that that's my inclination right now yeah, I, I just have a concern with the neighbors being that close yeah. I'd want to see a full plan Again, it would affect the hours because this says here lighting's going off at 11. So would they commit to have alcohol but still close by 11? Yeah, we've got well, to talk about something open until 2 o'clock. The whole covenant doesn't get lifted. This, right. right. This stays, so, I mean, so I'm, I'm assuming so, the 11 o'clock shutoff. I don't want them coming back three months from now. So we put our tenant in. They're struggling because they have alcohol, but they have to close at 11, and across the street's not closing until 2. I don't want to get into that situation. I'd rather tell them up front now, no alcohol. They want alcohol, bring the tenant back, and then we'll see who it is. Because if it's, you know, it, 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 is it complimentary or is it, is it the driving force of who's going in here? Is it a need, Nick? Do you need alcohol at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's personal, Ed. You might yeah. not. <laughs> After this evening, Nick. I will. You know that. Um, Can you wait till 9 o'clock? No. <laughs> The tenant we're talking about is not an alcohol tenant so, now, but of course, <laughs> you know, we don't want to restrict ourselves because then we're tied to this tenant and the tenant's going to drive a pretty hard bargain when it comes to lease terms. Um, we would like the ability um, to provide alcohol, but as I said, it's not, it's not tied to the particular tenant that we're all thinking about if we do enter into a lease with that tenant. But that well, is in the I, negotiation I, now. We haven't entered into one with Right. Them I, I want to make one thing clear. I was not suggesting pre-approval of a particular tenant. 
I mean, what I envisioned was that you would negotiate with the tenant, and if you hadn't a cart, if you did not have a carte blanche, you would tell the tenant, and you would tell every tenant you talked to, that we have to go back to the township and make sure that this deal, not you, but this deal, is approved. So I'm still unclear as to what the I'm inclined to and comfortable with sort of a broad um, exception here uh, within the parameters of the 5,000 square feet because as I think about it, I think we're talking about a relatively small space. It's in a rather large parking lot. It's off the street. Uh, I think, frankly, I'm not particularly concerned about the alcohol personally because, I th again, I think it's a rather limited use. Um, I wouldn't be concerned if Gennardi <laughs> wanted to serve beer, just to raise a, a, a indelicate issue. But um, but that's different than. But I, I, it's entirely different matter. Right. But but I I wouldn't be particularly concerned about. Uh, I mean I, well, enough said. Yeah. And I, I I think that I would be comfortable um, with an exception, a comma after the instead of the period after the word buildings and said, except that uh, up to a certain number of feet in square feet in this particular building may be used for a restaurant. Uh, uh, and I personally wouldn't have a problem if it were serving liquor, but that's my own view. Yeah, and that's what, we're, what we'd be asking for. We're, would be so the question is whether we've there. circled the issue enough. Done? I'm content. I'm, I mean, okay. I, I think I agree with John, and I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, I'd motion that we modify the covenant to allow a restaurant up to approximately 5,000 square feet in the smaller of the two buildings, and that it be allowed to, and the covenant be modified such that it's the uh, establishment's allowed to serve alcohol. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. Any further discussion? Now you're gonna. You're, you just said we modify the covenant. You mean recommend that the township allow them? Yes, to recommend. Yes. yes. That's a minor difference, but I want to make sure it's clear. I think that's a great idea. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda is subdivision number 2009 D 03. Preliminary of Agnes Irwin School to construct an addition slash replacement of athletic and dining facilities of the middle slash upper school. Construct additional parking and stormwater management facilities at 295 South Ithan Avenue. Is the applicant present? We are. Dan. Dan, as, I've, uh, as we've done it before recently, can keep yours to a minimum and let the applica applicant um, give his presentation or their presentation, and then we'll open it up to planning commission uh, questions after the fact. Very good. This is the Agnes Irwin School. Uh, this was before you as a sketch plan before they went to zoning back in uh, in the spring. I don't. I don't. I didn't take note of the date. Um, it was earlier this year. I think they were February 9th, 2009, Nick, uh, zoning hearing on this? Um, I believe so. It was, it was second. second. Second? Okay. Second. Okay, thank you. Just to give you a layout of the property, we have Ethan Avenue running across the top of the plan, running in an east-west direction, Conestoga Road running in relatively north-south direction in this area. It's residential across on opposite around the perimeter is all residential. The area shown in yellow are existing buildings that are on the campus now. The proposed addition is shown in green. There is a small portion of the, this building, the existing middle school, that gets removed in order to accommodate the, the addition. Existing parking is shown in orange. Proposed parking is shown in the pink. And again, there is some existing parking in this area that's getting expanded. So there are tennis courts that are on the property now. They're getting slightly relocated 
Uh, they're generally in this location now, but they're being tweaked a little bit to fit in better with the proposed addition. So there's a cafeteria and a gymnasium that is proposed as part of the, uh, the proposed work. So there were 17 comments. Dan, from is the there any staff. demolition? I'm sorry? Is there any demolition? There is. What's yeah, there, there's a small portion of this building. It's difficult to see. I, I have it highlighted in yellow. But this gets removed to accommodate the addition. Okay, so it's being replaced. Okay. And the tennis courts that exist are okay. demolished. Where is the existing gym? Right in here. Okay. So right now there's a short parking lot that kind of drops you off. So I let me here's the existing gym right in here where it's yellow coming across. So this all gets removed right in here. And then the new area is shown in green. What is where the proposed, the large square proposed addition, what's there now? Yes. Dan, why don't, we let the, why don't we let the applicant give okay, his this, presentation this on that? This is grass. Grass. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we can leave it up to the, like I said, there's 17 comments that we have from staff, and we can get into that. Dan, do we have major changes from the last time we saw this? No. Basically the same. Yes. Yeah, this is the same plan. Remember, uh, before we went to zoning, there was a site plan review of this. Um, Joe Han is the engineer on the project, so I brought him up here also. Uh, Joe, can you just point out where the existing gymnasium is located? Yes, uh, Dan has been highlighted on the plan uh, in yellow. So the, the expansion of the parking is really taking the place of the existing gymnasium. And as Dan mentioned, what we're doing here is we're, and I think you may have seen these pictures before, is um, the cafeteria and the gymnasium is very inadequate. There is no intent to increase enrollment or anything here. We're just going to serve the upper school. Um, here's a photograph of the cafeteria. You may recall you saw it previously, just showing, showing that it's crowded. And then remember the gymnasium, and I think many of you have probably been in that gym uh, if you have children that have played because the gym is uh, used by uh, Rounder Township as well. It's actually given to Rounder Township when Agnes Sterling was not using it to use for their rec program. And there is no seats. Uh, and there's a single row of seats, uh, no other seating, and the gym itself is small uh, by um, high school standards. Uh, what the zoning relief granted Currently, uh, the, the Lennox Arts building was non-conforming in that uh, the, when Agnes Irwin was constructed, the building setback was only 75 feet or 74 or whatever. And this Lennox Arts building was built because it did not increase existing non-conformity. I believe that was around 92, was that? Or that the uh, or maybe after that, but it was basically built because it did not increase nonconformity. This building is even further back than the existing 75 feet. It's 137 feet, and that's why we need the zoning relief for that. Um, Agnes Irwin actually owns this property here that is right across from the tennis courts and right across from the main proposal um, where the new headmaster Mary Suppolo lives. Who's present, uh, along with Chip Clothier, who is president of, of the board of Agnes Irwin. Um, as to Dan's comments, first, and remember we talked about the riparian buffer before, but we had this previously, we were talking about riparian buffer. And um, at that time, and maybe you can show him, Joe, uh, where the stream runs. And it's basically already enclosed. It's enclosed by concrete and um, culverts. And we were told when we first met with staff, and this project's been going on for a while, so it was probably two years ago, that since we were enclosing it, we did not require, did not require relief from the riparian buffer requirement because the purpose of the riparian buffer requirement is to protect the river banks and, or the stream banks. And since there was no protection required there, that um, we did not have to comply with it. And already, the stream already runs below 
the, um, the school and is already encapsulized. Um, and perhaps, Joe, if you can show the board what we're talking about. Uh, yes, this is a, a same copy of the site plan. What I've done is highlighted the areas where the existing stream is enclosed and the areas where it's an open channel. If you start all to the left side of the drawing, down at Conestoga Road, there's a small section that's uh, open channel. Uh, there's a culvert that goes underneath the driveway, so it's enclosed in that section. Then there's a grassed open channel that's in between the parking area, and then it's enclosed. And, and that grass, that area will still stay open? This area, yeah. right. This area stays open. There's, as part of this application, there's no improvements or changes to the parking in that area. This area is all uh, floodplain uh, from that culvert down to Conestoga Road. Then continuing up uh, through the site, there's a double concrete box culvert that's enclosed that comes up just, just below what's the existing cafeteria. And that's in an actual open channel that goes under the cafeteria. So the cafeteria is built over the open channel. And then it continues in an open channel till you get to culverts, which are the outfall from the storm sewer system that crosses the soccer field. Uh, so the, the stream's enclosed in that section across the soccer field to the uh, northern boundary of our site from joining neighbor. I uh, just want to mention that the stormwater from Ithan Avenue is collected all along Ithan, comes in and across our site, and also discharges at that same point. So we have an area that's approximately 180 feet in length that will be enclosed as part of the improvements to the property. Joe, currently, um, a portion of that is actually the portion to the left of your current dining room cafeteria, as I'm, yeah, that is actually um, open in uh, concrete walled. It's contained by concrete walls. That's it's not like a riverbed or, or stream bank at all. That's correct. As it goes underneath the dining room, it's in the same, um, so as it goes under the building, it's in the same water course or water management in there. But as it goes up to the right, it does actually, uh, it is in a stream-like condition that isn't enclosed in concrete. It isn't, doesn't have a concrete base underneath it. It actually has stream, um, uh, and dare I use the word, wetlands. Yes, they're, they're, we have done an environmental uh, study. We have met with uh, DEP and the Army Corps on okay. several occasions. Uh, a pre-application meeting, we have to go to them and get a joint 105 permit in order to, in, in their terms, we're doing two things. We're actually shifting the location in order to get the box culvert mm -hmm. underneath the building and also enclosing it. Okay. But uh, from their preliminary meetings, which date back to probably 2006, um, they felt that since the majority of this was enclosed, that this wasn't that much of an environmental impact, we have to offset it. We'll probably have to do some mitigation down, downstream. But uh, like I said, we've had a couple meetings with them, and uh, they understand that. Okay. Have you, have you had a wetland study done on the, um, on the entire um, open water course? Yes, and basically the wetlands are contained in, this, in the stream bank. Okay, okay. Um, will the I'm sorry. good please? Will the uh, the stream bank be closed from that point where uh, at the parking lot to to your uh, left, I believe, the point at the parking lot close as it follows all the way up. It will be closed until the culvert in the corner of the property. Will it daylight at any portion through the middle? No. So it'll be completely closed. Yeah, correct. Um, just uh, just staying on the subject for a little uh, bit because obviously. Um, according to the SAC, SAC um, memorandum uh, number one, um, the township or the township staff at this point in time, and that's uh, not uh, saying what they said before in your discussions with them, uh, but right now they are saying that you might possibly need a uh, uh, relief. I think it's a special exception from the riparian buffer ordinance, Nick. Um, and with that in mind, I turned to Dan on that one. I don't, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's on our it's on our mm -hmm. memorandum, and I think it's it's probably, um, if I'm not if not mistaken, in the riparian buffer zone uh, ordinance portion, it it does is it reference that the township engineer actually makes the uh, final call on whether it's. Yes. Okay. Is it township engineer or zoning officer? No, it's no, township it's engineer. Township engineer on the riparian buffer. 
Yeah. Okay. He makes. He may. I think. I believe the township engineer makes the determination whether it is whether it falls into the category of riparian buffer or wetlands, or whether you have to comply with that arena. Okay. Um, and and the the procedure is still you proceed the zoning hearing board for that. Yeah. Yeah. You need zoning hearing board special exception, okay. um, but that is obviously a hurdle that. Okay. Since it's on here, we need to either get you back before the zoning hearing board before we act on a recommendation to the commissioners on this, or because I'm not comfortable moving forward. Again, if granted that if you don't get the, re, the riparian buffer relief or it's not determined, well, I think your plan might change a little bit before us. So I, I think we need to straighten that out before we do move forward. I'm not going to say that that's it for tonight. I'm just saying right. let's review all the issues here and, and make sure that we have all the um, issues covered. We understand. Forward. Okay. Um, so I think, number one, we can kind of hold off for right now because I think that's something that's going to have to in the, you guys are going to have to come back next month and in the interim work that out with Township and wherever I think you probably have time to go to the Zoning Board if you do need to squeak that in. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Sure. Uh, number two, um, we do have the parking requirements. We do meet the parking code. And I think this was addressed before the Zoning Hearing Board as well and so we just need to show that uh, on the plan. That's correct. Uh, Nick, I'm sorry to jump in again. Um, the zoning relief that you got from the zoning board, did that include um, parking relief? No, it, it did not, not include not parking relief. Um, did you read, is that new parking on the ledge uh, or up by, yeah. yes. We're adding you. some parking. Is that in the um, setback? Is that something? Yes, that, and we did get relief for that. So you did, get, that's mm -hmm. why I wanted, so you did get the, you didn't, yes. for parking spaces, you didn't get relief, Correct. But, but for the setback of parking, you did get we relief. We did. Okay. What else, just so we can jump, uh, what other relief sure. did you get from uh, the, the zoning hearing board? we got from the zoning hearing board was um, as to, we got a, a special exception because we're not increasing existing nonconformity as to the location of the proposed addition. Um, we got relief on the parking for parking within the front yard setback. And, uh, the, which was also existing nonconforming. It was also existing nonconforming since it already existed. The uh, board stated that uh, on building length, since we had a break here, we did not need relief on the building length. And also on the sport area, we were existing nonconformity. And um, on the tennis courts, it was existing nonconformity. And that was moved slightly closer, but no closer than existing nonconformity as to athletic um, fields. Okay. And I believe they were the ones that we um, received relief on. So basically, everything was a special exception in that we did not increase existing nonconformities. Okay. Um, as to number three, uh, the significant probably, uh, and we will add that to the plan, the significant uh, relief was in 2000, actually, there was an addition to the Lennox Arts Building here, and that also did not increase existing nonconformity, which was only approximately 75 feet. Um, I will note, as I mentioned, this is almost double that as far as um, you know, the requirement. So we will add that to the plan. Um, provide documentation as to impervious covers. Joe, you can add that to the plan. Correct. That's number four. Number five, shade tree. We, we understand we have to go to shade tree. Number six, NPDES. We understand we have to do that. Um, number seven, adding floodplains, wetlands. No problem with any of those. No problem. The, the lines are on there. We just need to add notations to clarify it. Uh, number eight, we talked about uh, PA. Department of Environmental Protection has to approve any stream enclosure, so yes, we would have to go to them, as well as any encroachment into any wetlands. Uh, the proposed sidewalk, Joe, why don't you talk a little about the proposed sidewalk. Currently, I believe we have the sidewalk here. It's actually not on the street. It's pushed back from the street. And we actually have um, areas, I don't know if it's on this plan, Joe, or maybe yeah, it's on, on. It's on. We have areas here that you'll see that there's a fence, but we have openings that we provided openings in the fence that pedestrians can walk on the sidewalk, which is here. You know, Eighth and Avenue is right here. So we actually have pushed it back off the street instead of providing it on the street. Um, and it, as I mentioned, we have areas where the fence breaks so that pedestrians are able to walk uh, the length of that. 
Anything else to add on that, John? The only thing I wanted to add was that uh, in a typical scenario, you'll see a, a curb and then maybe a grass strip and then a sidewalk. In this case, the, uh, the runoff from the road, it goes in sheet flow onto the field, and we didn't want to change the drainage pattern there. So we want to construct a sidewalk at grade, and we felt that the existing um, split rail fence and trees provided a buffer between the edge of the road and the sidewalk. So the sidewalk is on the school side of the trees, and we don't uh, go out and do any work in the roadway. And this way, too, we would not have to damage any of the trees. And the sidewalk is accessible to the public also, as we mentioned, because we've provided breaks in the fence where they can walk inside here. For example, in Wayne, we would want to pull off the side of the street so that it'd be more inland so you're not walking down the street and dodging cars at the same time. But and then in this area where there's already curbing, we're constructing the sidewalk sort of the standard way that you built the sidewalk along the road. Um, as to number 10, transportation impact study. Um, yes, we have that in the works, and the only reason we don't have it is school just started. We didn't want to do a transportation impact study in July or August, and since school started in September, so we will be providing that. And it looks like you know, you'll have time to review that because we're going to have to go back on number one anyway. Um, planning modules, so we're planning modules, yes. You know, we know we have to apply for those or get an exemption. Correct. Institutional Long Range Development Plan, Dan, that was submitted, it probably was in a different file. Um, I think it was submitted back in February of 2009. And Joe, Joe gave me a copy today. Okay. And basically all it shows is this plan here. There is no other, I don't think the plan showed anything else beside what we're proposing here. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. As a matter of fact, this, this plan that I've highlighted and showing is, is uh, the Institutional Long Range Plan basically matches the land development plans that are submitted. Okay. Um, 13, I don't think we had an issue with that, right? That was the reduction of the proposed landscape island? Correct. So that didn't encroach on the right of way. Um, stormwater management design, that is a final plan issue, but Joe, if you want to just address Dan's comments on that. Well, we, we will comply with uh, those comments. Uh, the, the plan is designed in accordance with the Township stormwater requirements and DEP BMPs. We have done uh, the infiltration test uh, last year as part of doing the preliminary design. We have high groundwater in the majority of the site, so we really don't have an option for infiltration. So we need, we're looking at cisterns and green roofs and things like that to, to uh, comply with the BMPs. And those details will be provided as part of the final plans. Um, the fire lane, and perhaps I think this one's a better one to show. Um, we are proposing a fire lane here, as you'll see in pink that Dan has outlined. Um, and um, we're also when the Lenox Art Center addition was constructed in 2000, we added a hydrant up in this area to provide for that. Um, also, with the proposed addition, we'd probably be putting a hydrant, I believe, in this area. Joe, is that what we were talking about? Right, in the, for the, proposed uh, in addition? the, in the loading area. Oh, in the loading right. area, okay. Here, um, as we do have a fire lane, now the problem with, you know, I'm not certain if Dan was thinking about, this is st heavy steep slopes back here. I don't know if Dan wanted us to cut into that with the fire <coughs> lane or what the intent on that one was. This, this was a comment from the fire marshal. Um, he wanted to see the fire lane running parallel with the patio, getting it closer to the tennis courts. Yes. And my suggestion in my comments was to possibly, instead of making it wider, for hopefully something you would never use, is it possible to increase the strength of the patio to allow that to act as the additional fire lane if ever necessary? That, that's actually intent. It just doesn't show up okay. on the plan here, so we'll clarify that when Great. we revise okay. the plan. And I, I think Dan's last comment was a sprinkler connection. Um, and. We, as I said, we did construct one up here, I believe, Dan, in that area, previous, you know, with the uh, addition back in 2000. We right, do and intend that's, shown, that's shown on the plans. Okay, and we intend to construct another one 
I don't know if that's shown. Is that shown, Joe? No, it's not shown. Okay, but we do intend to put one there yes. so we can show that on the correct. Plan. Okay. Okay, again, this was a comment that came from the, the fire marshal on item number 16 about trying to locate one that would serve the, the lower school and the school to the left, the, the Lenox, and I can't read it, the lower school and the Lenox, somewhere in there is what he was, uh, he was looking for something in that area. Okay, we'll need to evaluate that. Yeah, we, as I said, we have one up here, I think, that serves Lenox now. Okay, and you know we'll look at it. But we have we have water lines that come in off the road to come back and service this building. So. And then the sprinkler connection on 17. Any issue with that? That's the one we we're just talking about. Okay. So we're okay with that. We will comply that, with. That's that. correct. Okay. So, any so questions? there's there's two comments I'd like to uh, on number 14 that talking about the storm water. There there's a little bit of a conflict. The subdivision code talks about submitting these stormwater plans at the final stage. The township stormwater ordinance talks about submitting them with the first set of plans. So that's why it's, it's noted in here, so that we can address it as soon as possible. And I just want to touch base on the sidewalk, uh, I believe item nine. Um, the concern that staff had was that the location of the sidewalk, while it is safer, to get pedestrians as far away from the road as possible. It does, at least it gives me the impression that that is for the school's use and not a public sidewalk. So I'm not sure what the right balance is to make it clear that that sidewalk is for public use. It, it's kind of difficult to see, but it just ends when you get close to the property line. It doesn't bring you back up to the road. So exactly, right in there to well, the right. It, it comes up. Well, Go ahead. Yeah, I think he's talking about this section right, right here. We, yes. can, we can just extend this back to the okay. road. This, th there'll have to be a spot where we stop before the property line because the grade falls off onto the adjoining property. So we'll extend it as far along our frontage as possible and then bring it back to the edge of the existing road. We need some kind of easement to protect the township's interest? Well, yes. normally the sidewalk, the public sidewalk's in the right-of-way. This mm -hmm. is shown to be out of the right-of-way. Right. So do we need some kind of easement for that, some kind of... To protect the I, I would have right to, to check to, to make sure. I'm not exactly sure what would be required. Okay. Is that sidewalk on the inside of the of the poster fence? I can't remember. Where's it on the out? It's it's proposed to be on the school side of the fence. So you'll have the fence and mm -hmm. the trees, and then the sidewalk, <coughs> which is it's you know generally planning wise, they're getting more away from the sidewalk immediately next, uh, next to the road and, and trying to get some landscape area. Uh, between it, I don't know how you've handled it. Um, the Land Rover dealer is a good example. It's sidewalks back. I don't know if you created an easement for mm -hmm. that or not. Is there a, to the right? Is there an, an existing sidewalk there off the property? There's there's a, there's there's no sidewalk along Ethan until you get to Villanova. All right. Okay. So up all the way up to Browning Lane. There's so you no can't tie into on, anything on either side of the road. What, what height fence are you proposing for the uh, Ethan Road side of the property? It, it, it's an existing fence that's out there. You're just going to keep it. Post and rail, right. You're just going to keep that. Okay. Yes. Good. Does it already have the cuts in it, or do we have to no, provide we have the cuts? No, we have to provide the cuts. We were talking back in February about the internal travel from the parking lots and what I'll call the lower left or southeast corner over now to the new uh, gymnasium. Will they, now that we see this fire lane, will you be able to walk that fire lane and go into the back side of the uh, gymnasium, or are you still going to force people to walk all the way around the front of this campus? Because my concern back then, and I still have it now, is you're forcing the people in that parking lot to walk through all your parking lots to get to that. No, you would be able to walk along the fire lane, yes. And there'll be an entrance on the, on the back side. It, it, it looks like it's that. Well, there's, there's steps that go up to the... You're talking, referring to getting up to the tennis yes. courts? Yes. There's steps that go up to the tennis courts. And the, then you go right in the, the building terraced there. area is actually, uh, grading-wise, the, the tennis courts are set into the hillside, but they are at the second level of the gymnasium. Okay. So the, the dining facility is a level below that. So there'll be steps that go up there. Uh, and then this terrace area is, is all accessible. There's no stairs. Good. Okay. Can you get into the gym from that entrance, from the back? You'd, uh, the only access I'm aware of right now is 
the, the, the second level of the athletic facility, which there's sort of a, uh, a lobby area that's next to the gymnasium, so that has access to the tennis courts. Dan, regarding the sidewalk, do you think with an, with an easement, signs, and an adequate number of breaks in the fence, do you think it would communicate that it's public and that people would use it? Yeah, I, I do. I do think people would use it, it if they knew it was for public use. Very good. I don't know if we could put a sign there or something. I don't know. Yeah, my, my guess yeah. is there's an easy, inexpensive technical solution just right. involving some kind of sign and public sidewalk. a sufficient number of breaks in the gate to make the, the sidewalk look like it's public. With regard to the curbing, Dan, um, you've reviewed this with um, traffic safety. Um, I guess there there really isn't a curb there along a majority of that area on South Athens. It's it's flat. <clears throat> From the uh, the exit of our driveway area up to the edge of the property, there's no curbing on okay. that section. You uh, the rest of the property is curbed. Normally curbed. And traffic safety seems okay with that, and you're fine with the. Uh, yeah, they were involved with the subdivision review. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 Joe had pointed out earlier about sheet runoff coming into there. So it, it's something we would continue to want to encourage to okay. get the water to, to that, run that was my point. So you really, you would encourage and you'd waive that requirement of our uh, yes. land development. Okay. Yes. And Dan, for number 10, is there, is there something that would, could concern us with the traffic impact study? Is there a reason that we should wait to approve this or not approve it until after we see the traffic impact study? Or do you see it as a formality? Well, it, it's my assumption, which is always dangerous, that there's no planned increase in students. So I guess I will turn that back over to the applicant to, to see if there is an anticipation. No, yeah, no, we had said that in the beginning, yes, there's no planned increase. And actually, we're going to make it somewhat better, and we have a larger queuing area right here. And that was part of the reason for this modification here is to provide a larger queuing area. But, but you plan on having the traffic impact study to us shortly before yes. we before the next meeting anyway. I mean, I, I personally am not a, a big believer in, in approving any plan or recommending a, um, uh, an approval of a plan without actually having the traffic impact study, especially in this arena, being that the, it's right near Villanova University. It's, it's a tough road in pick up and drop off. Um, uh, you know, I, I've seen the lines. I've seen the uh, kindergartner moms in line in the whole works, but uh, I know they do the best they can with the facilities they were given, so. But I would want to see a traffic impact study. The, the traffic counts have been completed. The study will be available in another week to two weeks. Perfect timing. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, actually, um, looking back at, at notes from before, um, one of the key things that, that, that we had noticed were the neighbors behind it were affected. And my, one of my questions was going to be, um, are there going to be restrictions on the times at night, for example, that the tennis courts are going to be lit? And what kind of what kind of lighting are you going to have on the outside? We don't want to, to have we don't want that to have an adverse impact on the people next door. Tennis courts will not be lit. Correct. At all. At all. They're not lit. Well, that one, if you will. <laughs> what about uh, security lighting and stuff around there? Will that be any more obtrusive than? It, it'll comply with your code. I don't have final building plans yet, but uh, we don't have any site lighting per se back in here so there, there absolutely will be security lighting and, and lighting for the building entrances but nothing more than that is this how tall is this is this one story or two the the building is uh is is two stories with a basement below grade uh it, it complies with your building height mm -hmm. it's uh in the back like i said it's only a story above the of above the tennis court and in the front, you'd see two stories. So from the back side, it's not going to be like it's, you know, this monstrosity. It's only going to be a one story tall. Correct. Are you going for a LEED certification, a like green building? It's going to be a green roof. We know that, right? <laughs> There's been discussions of, of tracking that. And then I guess as they get through the design process on the building. That would be great. <laughs> any other comments? Let me ask the public. Anyone from the public wants to make a comment, 
concerns, questions? Okay, well with that. Um, I do have, I, I know it's the Shade Tree Commission question. They were taking out several trees. Are you planning to put new ones in nearby where they were taken out or no? Yes. Uh, we will be increasing the buffer, the existing buffer that's uh, behind the tennis courts. Uh, if when we were in front of the board, in front of the Shade Tree uh, with the Arts and Science Center, uh, we did extensive planting back in here, so that'll be provided. Uh, that buffer will be extended up between the property and the tennis courts. Now, a couple of them are in this, the loop up in the, the front where the driveway, nope, on the left side. That one, you're taking, where, that, where you're putting the parking lot on the other side, a little further over. Over here. You're taking out at least a couple of trees. You're going to put them back in there? Or yes, or? correct. Okay. That led, that's nice green space. Okay. I don't think we need any um, extension from you because we had 60 days from September 11th, so we were well within that by the next meeting and then with the commissioners following, so we're fine with that. Okay, we'll see you next month. Okay, thank you. Does old business? Anyone with any new business? How about a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you.